A massive new study published in Nature found that castration increases lifespan across vertebrae species. So this includes zoo animals, rodents, and wild animals. Now this aligns with historical human data. So Korean eunuchs lived on average 14 to 19 years longer than their peers. Now, unless you're Brian Johnson, I'm sure you wouldn't consider chopping your balls off in pursuit of longevity. But here's the question. Can we apply this knowledge to our own health and in relation specifically to testosterone replacement therapy? So the study was incredibly comprehensive. It pulled together two basic kinds of data. So on the one hand, there's data coming from animals kept in zoos. So these animals often sterilized or put on some form of hormonal birth control. And zoos, they tend to keep very careful records of the animals that they manage. So there's a treasure trove of data here. They drew on records for 117 different types of zoo animals. But on the other hand, the authors also did a comprehensive search for published studies on the effects of sterilization. The 71 studies that they found covered 22 species of vertebrates, so those are animals with a backbone. And the studies covered everything from fish to humans. So here's what the data revealed. When it came to male zoo animals, sterilization significantly extended average lifespan. So the impact here was about 10%. And the numbers that they got from the 17 existing studies were similar. So what's actually going on here? How does castration lead to longer life in animals? And what does it mean for us humans? What jumps out at first is where we don't see gains. So that's in the areas of chronic diseases. So this is the category that would include things like heart disease and diabetes. This area is important because both of those issues are such massive problems in human populations and because they're linked to aging. So improvements here would be especially interesting. But again, we don't see improvements in this study. But that's hardly surprising. Instead, what's intriguing is the benefit that we see in another area. The biggest improvements in longevity came from avoiding deaths from other causes. So this is a grab bag thing that includes unknown causes and also rare causes that don't fit into other categories. Unfortunately by itself, this leads to a bit of a mystery about how castration might be helping, but we might get a clue from something that the researchers noticed about the timing of castration. So interestingly, the greatest increase in lifespan was seen when castration happened early, so before puberty. These individuals avoid a series of profound changes brought about in the body by testosterone. So the researchers speculate that castration may contribute to lifespan by altering how growth hormone pathways develop. So this pathway has clearly been connected to the aging process. So their basic idea is this. When we neuter an animal before puberty, we're intervening before testosterone, permanently programs growth hormone systems to run in higher gears, and turning down these systems has, broadly speaking, been associated with longer lifespans. So for example, if we use rapamycin to turn down the growth enzyme called mTOR in mice, worms, and flies, it extends lifespan. So in short, the researchers suggest that we're looking at two distinct mechanisms. If we shut down testosterone, it reduces risky behavior, but it also does something else to extend lifespan. It might be due to changes in longevity-linked signaling pathways. So these are the same pathways receiving all the attention in recent longevity research. Now, all of this is fascinating, but does this research have any implications for us? Because we hear worries all of the time about having too little testosterone. So is having too little testosterone actually a good thing for lifespan extension? Well, it would be great if we could somehow replicate this experiment in humans, but there's an obvious hurdle here. We're not about to do a randomized controlled trial with castration as the intervention anytime soon. And even if Brian Johnson tries it out, that's just one data point. But it turns out that we've got access to some intriguing data from historical records. So the castration of males for various reasons goes back a very long time. The earliest records of the practice are from around 4,000 years ago in Samaria. In some contexts, the practice became widespread enough that we can gather some significant amounts of data. One such context is the imperial court of the Chosen Dynasty in Korea, where eunuchs often held important government roles. And it just so happens that unique records survive from the early 1800s in the midst of that dynasty's rule. It records the birth and death dates of generations of eunuchs, of which the lifespans of 81 of them could be calculated. So the average lifespan of this group was 70 years, which might not sound super old by today's standards, but it was around 14 to 19 years longer than the lifespan of non-castrated men of similar socioeconomic status. So this study, it fits the same pattern of the zoo animals. Castration seems to boost longevity even in humans. So again, is low testosterone actually a good thing for lifespan extension? Well, the problem with this line of thinking is that we treat low testosterone for a reason. It isn't just about mood or vitality. Low testosterone is a predictor of type 2 diabetes. It's linked to osteoporosis in older adults. And chronically low testosterone levels are linked to an elevated risk of death from any disease. And that last one should be particularly interesting and catch our attention. Those Korean eunuchs with practically zero testosterone appeared to live longer, which certainly gives the impression that they were healthier. So why 
is there this apparent inconsistency? Well, first, it's important to acknowledge that the longevity benefits seen in the study might not actually be what they seem. The sources that the researchers drew on included partial biographical data for 385 eunuchs, but they only had birth and death dates for 81 of them, and these 81 might actually be outliers and not representative of the whole, so we shouldn't necessarily overinterpret this incomplete data, but equally we don't want to dismiss it either. The zoo study gives us reason to think that there's probably something to the Korean figures, but just because they lived longer doesn't necessarily mean that their health suffered no consequences. For example, a study of similar eunuch populations populations in China found that they had evidence of osteoporosis. So all things considered, it's highly likely that maintaining healthy testosterone levels as we age is desirable, but neither do we want to reach for testosterone injections to get to super therapeutic levels or ignore the root causes of why testosterone levels might be low in the first place. So factors like obesity and lack of exercise play critical causative roles. One study, for instance, found that if your body mass index or BMI was over 30, it was associated with nearly nine times the risk of having low testosterone. So the approach that I take in the clinic is to first address lifestyle factors by working with patients on their diet and their exercise and sleep. And if that's not enough to reach their weight targets, then we'll look at adding medications like GLP-1. Now, once a patient has reached their weight targets and they're exercising, if they truly have hypogonadism, which is defined by low testosterone levels that are causing symptoms, then we'll consider testosterone replacement therapy with oversight from our local endocrinologists. And once treatment has been initiated, then we carefully follow up these people to make sure that they're responding and keep an eye out for any adverse effects. Now, one of the things you've probably heard about is that testosterone levels are way too low and they seem to be dropping over time. So in this next video here, I go through a recent study that's uncovered a completely unexpected reason for why this is happening.